Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis. With me, as always, is June Liu. How you doing, June? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Getting so, ready for a show. Yep, yep. Couple, about a week and a half still. Um, no. So on this episode, we are talking about the Davidoff Nicaragua Box Press Toro. And uh, the cigar is 6 inches by 52 ring gauge. Uh, this comes out of the Tabadon factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, wrapper is Nicaraguan Habano Oscuro. Uh, binder is Nicaraguan Habano from Jalapa. And the filler is uh, Nicaraguan from Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli. And uh, it is blended by uh, Hendrik Hanky Kellner. And this cigar was released uh, in March of 2016 and has a price point of $17.20. Um, so I guess we'll just hop right into uh, our experience. Do you want to chat about your uh, pre-light experience? Yep. Um, so pre-light experience. Um, so every time I look at a Davidoff cigar, uh, I expect two things. Uh, I expect classy, um, and I respect. I expect refinement. So everything has to be kind of that classy, refined, luxurious kind of look. Um, and I felt that within the Nika box press, uh, it, it was definitely that, uh, but it would, but the, the black band with like kind of the silver ribbon around it, as well as like that amber orange, um, secondary band, uh, it all kind of, you know, called out for me that this is a, a rich, bolder, uh, rendition of a, of a Davidoff. Um, so also looking at the wrapper um i found the wrapper to be uh, a fairly oily colorado red as kind of a wrapper um beautiful wrapper uh there was a uh a water spot um on like the the second third of the cigar mm -hmm. and uh, usually i wouldn't care about this because uh as you know purchasing many boxes of cuban cigars um i kind of expect to see some ugliness such as that but uh given a dab it off i don't expect it to have any imperfections um so small minor markdown on that uh, but of course uh not a big deal um uh so the uh, the cigar felt <clears throat> I, I dug the box press uh, it was really had a really easy hold on it uh, like most box presses are um the cigar felt pretty well bunched and rolled uh there was an even and tight feel to it uh, and it had a really good amount of give all the way from uh, foot to head, uh, which made me believe no issues on the draw. Uh, the uh, cap, uh, had, there was a pretty thick cap on it, which I appreciated because it gave me that room to cut uh, further and, and multiple times as there may be tar and, and liquid buildup uh, through the smoking experience. Uh, and the veins were neatly pressed and uh, seems pretty visible. Uh, pre light aroma, um, I got off of the wrapper, flowery perfume, uh, deep white pepper, uh, a slight cedar and barnyard. Uh, when I nosed the foot, uh, I got very large pungent amount of a sneezing white pepper spice, uh, SMH cedar, slight roasted nuttiness. Um, on the cold draw, uh, not much on the cold draw for me, mainly got dry, some dry cardboard um, and, and uh, that intensity of the white pepper uh, was fairly uh, lip tingling for me. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, uh, so it looked nice. Uh, it was like a, a medium tan or a light brown. Um, there was a few noticeable veins on it, but the seams were almost invisible. Uh, the caps were nicely applied and, um, you know, had a, kind of that soft box press to it, which was nice. Um, talking about the bands, you're, you're right on, you know, black and silver primary band uh, looks nice. Uh, and the secondary band that's got black with that, I kind of call it as a copper color. Um, looks yeah. nice as well. So they, you know, w with those two bands on it, kind of with the wrapper color, it's, it's a nice presentation. Um, the aroma for me on the wrapper was uh, just a light leather. Um, and the foot was like a, give it a rate, you know, raisin sweetness uh, with a little bit of the leather in the background. And uh, the pre-light draw gave me a hefty dose of leather. Um, and it was a little, like a little slight pepper tingle uh, on my lips from, from that experience. So getting into flavor, uh, kind of take us through first third to final third. What was your experience like? Sure. Uh, the first third, off the bat, based upon first draw, got a lot of dry, earthy uh, profile. Uh, specifically, got a lot of refined graphite. Um, 
I got a, a, a dry black pepper that really coated the entire mouth. Uh, got charred wood. Um, I got a little bit of this bread and yeastiness to it. Uh, and I got a uh, over roasted kind of a uh, when you over roast and the nuts kind of get uh, burnt. So if the, so that flavor. Uh, so just an inch in the flavor profile felt really opened up a lot more and intensified. Uh, it gave me a deeper and richer notes of that same um, of the tannins of the refined graphite. Uh, and then the black pepper uh, also amped up quite a bit to the point where it was kind of starting to kind of inch towards the back of my throat. Mm. Um, and also at that point, I got a couple of flavors uh, that was new into the profile, uh, baking spice and uh, faint burnt sugar. Uh, on the retro hell, there was a ton of black pepper. It, it stung my nose. It, it cleared out my nose like like a good wasabi will do sometimes. <laughs> right. Um, and then I uh, got the baking spice and uh, think bread. So on the retro, it's pretty complex that I typically don't get as much uh, as this example. Uh, so that was really delicious. Um, even though wasabi up your nose doesn't sound all that in feeling. Mm -hmm. um, finish consisted of a lingering uh, tried wood. Uh, that same black pepper uh, and baking spice. And within the entire first third, uh, solid medium in terms of both body and strength. Now moving on to the second third. Uh, the profile for the most part was a continuation of first thirds profile. Uh, still bread, yeast, uh, dry black pepper spice. That's, you know, kind of itching over the back of my throat. Over roasted nuts, charred wood, refined graphite. Uh, Retro exactly the same, the nose burning, black pepper, uh, black, uh, the baking spice and faint bread. Um, the finish still black pepper, bread and baking spice. Um, and, and although the notes for the most part mimic the first third for me, mm -hmm. um, at different points within the second third, different notes will move up in uh, distinctiveness or perhaps intensity uh, as compared to other notes. Uh, namely, uh, you know, like the bread and yeast uh, and intensity of the black pepper will move uh, at, at different forefronts and, and backgrounds. Um, the, the the main thing about the second that I felt like was the strength just, it just ramped up um, to a medium full to, to almost a full. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really gave me this huge noggin uh Buzz <laughs> is the best way I can put it, I guess. Right. Um, and, and and it just it's it's a sometimes the strength was so much for me that it felt like I was ready to put the cigar down and you know grab some sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I did it uh, and I plowed through it. <clears throat> so uh, last third. Uh, so last third uh, started out uh, the same medium full to full strength, uh, medium body. And uh, it started out with this burnt caramel that was really tasty, um, as opposed to like that burnt sugar that I got in the first third. Mm -hmm. um, same black pepper, uh, but that black pepper kind of subsided uh, and, and got weaker, uh, and it kind of moved towards the front of my palate. Um, creamy bread, baking spice, charred wood, um, and I also got a very unique saltiness in the profile. Um, and that saltiness mixed in with that over roasted nuts kind of gave it a, a salted roasted nut sort of a taste. Right. Uh, so that was that was unique, and I I dug that. Uh, middle of the last third, uh, the profile kind of like died down, mm -hmm. uh, and I mainly got some charred wood and lingo black pepper. Um, but the retro was still powerful, and full of that black pepper, um, and the finish was just mainly lingo wood at that point, as a charred wood. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Yeah, initial light uh, got like a spicy cedar that had like a, a mild cinnamon finish to it. Uh, and the mild cinnamon was also uh, on the retro hill there. But after a few draws, um, the, the cinnamon went away and it became uh, more oaky on the retro hill. Um, and it went away from the mouth flavor as well. Um, but it, was, it has stayed, um, says a spicy cedar in the mouth. Uh, half inch in or so, the cedar became less spicy. Um, but the sp that spice kind of moved into the um, into the retro hill to mix with the oak. Uh, an inch in or so, the uh, cedar transformed into an oak. Uh, but there was a fair amount of cream that came in to mix with it, so it was a good good transition. An inch and a half in, um, oak was still the primary flavor uh, in the mouth and the retro hail. 
Um, but the cream was still there. It was just kind of a more of a background uh, flavor at that point. And then towards the end of the third, um, a mild pepper came in to mix with the oak and the cream. Um, but there was also a little bit of uh, mustiness that was coming in to the background, uh, but it was more noticeable on the retro hell. Uh, second third kind of continued on how that first third was finishing, um, but the light pepper had gone away. Uh, and the light mustiness, which it's a pleasant mustiness, um, that still remained. Uh, a quarter inch in, some char came into the mix, uh, and the oak faded back a little bit. Then the mustiness uh, ramped up as well. And then a little further in, the char went away, and the mustiness increased on the retro hail, and it mixed in with the oak. And then, um, i say at the halfway point, uh, the flavors became really full. Like, it just, not like, not necessarily the strength ramped up, just the fullness of the flavors there. It just became just uh, like if you turned up the volume on it, it was just a, a nice, a nice uh, welcoming thing there. Uh, slightly charred oak, uh, mustiness in the mouth and on the retro hail, and um, the mustiness was the primary on the re on the retro hail and with the oak in the background. Um, there was also like a significant increase in the smoke output at that point, which was interesting as well. I don't know if it burned through a certain leaf and got into another one. It just like really like volumes of smoke just started pouring out of the cigar. Uh, an inch and a half in, a little bit of pepper made its way into the mouth and the retrohale. And then during the end of the third, a little bit of mintiness came down to the retrohale as well. And kind of what you were talking about, the strength also ramped up for me. So kind of the first third was a, a little bit above medium. And then the second third, um, we're, we're at medium full. Um, so there's, you know, increase in flavor, body, increase in smoke production, increase in strength. It's just a big, a big jump up in the, in the progress of the cigar. Uh, final third, oak and mustiness stayed there. Uh, some earthiness started to creep in. And then a quarter inch in, uh, some of the bitterness, um, some bitterness started to mix in with the oak, uh, the mustiness and the earth. And at the halfway point, uh, I got a really sharp spice that just took over the profile completely. So in the mouth and on the retro hail, it was just like a, a, a burning uh, sensation on the retro hail. It, it, when you talk about clearing you out, that one just got me. It was like, boom. But that was only it was only for a few draws. And then the, the spice like completely uh, settled down. Oak came back to the front. Um, spice uh, melted on the retro hail. So then it was more pleasant again. It wasn't like I was just burning my face off the rest of the way. Uh, an inch and a quarter in, uh, the spice completely went away, and then oak was the primary flavor. And the cigar was getting a bit warm at that point, so the sensation was kind of like a warm oak. So it was it was nice, um, just how they mixed together. So it wasn't like the cigar was getting hot, but it was just, I don't know, a warm oak. Maybe it was like a campfire-ish kind of a, you know experience or something like that. But that's kind of how the cigar finished out. It was like, the I guess, the last, uh, I don't know, half inch or so, kind of just went down that same path to the end and uh, the strength kind of dropped down a little bit for me. So still above medium, kind of the same level that the first third was. So, you know, just a, kind of a big spike in everything in the, in the middle of the second third, and then it kind of tapered back down again. That's a, it, there's an interesting point you bring up because most Davidoffs that I've had, there's this uh, quintessential mustiness to Davidoffs. Yeah, uh, I didn't get it at all within this example, and I don't believe I got any of it on the Robusto version either, mm -hmm. uh, let alone the original uh, Nicaragua reliefs. So, yeah, I seem to get know. it on uh, most Davidoffs I smoke. Um, you know, s some of it's a mustiness, but then some of it you almost get a some of the, the I'd say the lighter bodied ones. You almost get a bit of a mushroom, like the mustiness kind of yeah, yeah. takes it to the that mushroom. Next. It's it's funky. Let's just yeah. say yeah, it's a, it's a good still a, it's a good flavor. Uh, it's not yeah. bad. It's just it's it's very unique to Davidoff. I think. I mean, some you may yeah. get in the cigar here or there, but it's 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 a it seems to be a profile for Davidoffs. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about performance then. So, um, burn and draw for you. What was that like? <clears throat> the burn um, was ample smoke production on the cigar uh, that lasted throughout the entire smoking experience for me. Um, but the burn was just incredibly uneven at times. Um, but although fairly uneven, the, all the components of every single leaf burn through uh, just fine without any issues or uh, touch-ups or lights. Uh, the ash uh, was fairly sturdy, uh, but it, 
every single time the ash tapped off by itself and, and a few times that it you know fell on my lap which was which is always annoying um <laughs> but it, it's funny because when i was trying to take my burn picture um i mean it was it was it was sturdy in the sense sturdy in the sense of when you're inside an enclosed area that's not windy Mm -hmm. um, the ashes are going to fall, but right when I try to get outside to take a picture, there's a couple of times I was trying to take that burn, but it just tapped off by itself. Right. Uh, which was pissing me off. But <laughs> um, the draw I thought was absolutely on point. Uh, I felt like it had just the right amount of resistance mm -hmm. so that it provided all the complexities and nuances uh, it, that you could taste. Um, and as mentioned on the pre light experience, um, I had a snippet a couple of times because I had a couple of like liquidity tar kind of a buildup. Um, mm -hmm. But having a quick snip um, and the deepness of the uh, um, of the cap uh, really helped in that. So, uh, right. and that didn't affect the draw at all. It was uh, the draw was on point uh, from first snip to second snip. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the burn for me was kind of, I think, similar to yours. It got off quite a bit in the first third. There was like this one section that didn't want to burn, so I had to do a touch-up um, to kind of get it back to even. I tried, uh, you know, rotating and let it go as long as I could to see if I can get it to catch up, but it wouldn't do it. So I had to hit it back with the lighter just to get it uh, back to level. Um, in the second third, though, it was a little wavy, but it always um, caught itself up. It didn't need any intervention at that point. And then the final third was just pretty much razor sharp the whole way through that didn't need any attention. So the burn got better as the cigar went along. Um, I was getting about you know, a little over an inch uh, for ash uh, segments before I had to tap off on. I didn't have any issues where it kind of dropped off on its own, but I, was, I wasn't I was really in the wind. Um, so maybe I was just a little, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, had a little bit better environment so they didn't have any outside influences knocking the ash off for me. Uh, the draw was a little loose through like the first half inch of the cigar, but after that it tightened up to the level I like, um, and then it was pretty much perfect the rest of the way. So it was uh, a really good experience in regards to the draw. And like I talk, talked about earlier, is smoke production, you know, at the midway point was just crazy. Uh, so it was uh, it was all burning well and and moving along. So overall, what were your thoughts on this cigar? Overall, I thought uh, I was first excited for this. Uh, second edition of the Davidoff Nicaragua, but being that it's box press, and I understand that it's a different blend as compared to the original one, uh, but I couldn't help but to benchmark this one against the original uh, Davidoff Nika non-box press Toro. Right. Um, I felt like, I mean, I, there's a couple of thoughts. I, I felt like Davidoff performed what I believe uh, what they were going after in the cigar, which is still give the Davidoff complexities and nuances, but providing that richer, deeper, bolder side of uh, what Nicaragua tobacco is truly known for. Mm -hmm. So I got that, uh, and I get that. But I felt like at certain points, especially within the second and last third, uh, the strength was just too strong to really – enjoy the other nuances mm -hmm. uh, and the complexities. Uh, and kind of, I guess what I'm saying is it, it's it's strong just to be strong and, and it's not as refined, which is what I've come to expect from what Davidoff does. Uh, so I felt like that fell in comparison to the original uh, mm -hmm. Nicaragua Toro. Uh, at the same rate, I mean, you're spending, you're saying that MSRP is like 17 bucks for this guy. Yeah. Um, you know, $17 MSRP, uh, is it worth the coin for you to try? Yeah, it is. It definitely is because um, there's not there's a, amongst the sea of Nicaragua cigars out there. Uh, I still believe this one does a good job of providing complexities, nuances, and refinement, uh, but still give it that quintessential Nika boldness. Right. What about you? Yeah, for me, the flavors were a bit fragmented for the first half of the first third, but then things started to meld. Um, well there. Uh, second third was very full on flavor and I think it was the best representation of the blend. And then the final third had some big swings, but it was, you know, still enjoyable. Um, the performance is pretty good. So that is always a plus. And, um, you know, the, it was just, it was a joy, enjoyable and it kept my attention. So there was, you know, good transitions. The flavors were there. Um, but I would probably recommend this cigar to a more experienced cigar smoker, uh, partly because of the strength 
um, and because of the fullness of the body. Um, I just think that somebody that maybe is new or likes milder cigars, they might get a little overwhelmed by the cigar. Um, and so I think sometimes body can overwhelm uh, a smoker. They're just not used to having the flavors so much in your face or to be um, just so full. So, um, you know, take that with what you'd like. And, you know, if you want to dip your toes in and try this out, you, you're, you're more than welcome to, but just uh, be, be prepared. Um, and I'd say it's also probably a more of a midday evening smoke uh, just because of those same aspects, the fuller body and the strength. Um, and I think it would pair well with coffee or um, some spirits that can stand up to the body and the strength in this cigar. Um, it may overwhelm some other stuff, you know, if you're drinking uh, tea or, I don't know, some lighter spirits, some, something like that, that um, that don't have a little bit more body to it themselves. So maybe like a, you know, a spicy bourbon or something like that would might go really well with this cigar. But overall, overall, I thought it was a pretty good cigar. So you scored it uh a 6.6 i scored it a 7.2 so we're pretty pretty close on scores uh you think your overall score was a uh a good representation of your experience yeah i mean overall i felt like you know flavor wise first second last third good good to average um giving an amazing draw and an average burn and overall just good for mainly my um flavor experience that sounds about right, um, but uh, do you have any idea how much I scored that Robusto one off the top of your head? Or? I don't. Okay, um, but I, I think I like that Robusto one um, a little more because I felt like that one had a uh, more of a distinctive, fuller flavor to the mm -hmm. cigar. But um, but nonetheless, you know, you know, uh, still a great cigar and uh, worth picking up if you to try for sure. Yeah, I think my score is pretty fair in regards to the experience. Um, you know, it's a, it's a definitely a a good cigar, and uh, I think the score I think the score is a is a fair representation of of the experience there. Um, but like like you said, you know, we're going to do a, a line analysis between the robusto and the toro for this uh, because those are the two vitolas that currently exist for the uh, the box pressed uh, line. So I think it'll be interesting to see um, once we go back, take a look at our scores for the robusto, and then uh, kind of do our a little comparison between those two to find out which one we like better and, and whatnot. It's been a little while since we smoked the, the Robusto, so um, I have to kind of go back and look at my notes to kind of to see how they, they compare. But yeah. Yeah. So any final thoughts on this cigar? Um, go buy it. Try it. <laughs> yep, definitely. Uh, definitely something to, to try for sure. Uh, I think the scores represent that, um, that it's definitely something at that level. Uh, you're going to be spending a little bit more money to do that, uh, but I think it's at least worth a uh, try to, to see if it's something that you, that you like. Um, and then you can always see if you want to go for the Robusto or the Toro, and then uh, at that point decide uh, if you want to kind of invest a little bit more and get some more of those. Um, all right. Well, we appreciate you uh, tuning in, checking out this uh, review recap. Um, if you're just catching this review on YouTube, be sure to check out the website, developingpallets.com to read the full review and, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And then you can uh, find us and uh, follow us on, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google plus all the, uh, social media outlets. Um, and, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks June. Thank and, you. uh, we will catch you all on the next one. Thanks guys.